Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Andres, um, Andrew, online web teacher, and um, I strongly advise you to watch lesson one if this is your your first video. Um, I just wanted to do uh, a small explanation of all the terminology that we are going to be using throughout this uh, lessons. So, basically, let's do a recap of what we already know. So, we know that an IP address is the address of a given thing connected to the Internet. That thing could be either your, you know, your laptop, your cell phone, or whatever thing is connected to the Internet has an IP address, all right? Then we have host names and domain names, uh, which is a, a name that can be used to be translated to translate to an IP address, right? That we can use later to take us where we need to go. And DNSs or domain name servers that are servers that keep lists of host names and domain names under resolutions to IP addresses. But let's talk about something else. Let's talk about protocols. And what is a protocol? Well, a protocol is <clears throat> an introduction, okay, as a, a, a way of communicating. So if you if two people meet and one of them speak English and the other speaks French, they won't be able to understand each other and they won't be able to form a conversation. The same thing goes on on the internet, all right? There are several protocols out there and each of them are used uh, for a different thing. And uh, some of them are HTTP, which is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, FTP, which is the file transfer protocol, POP3, the post office protocol version 3, and SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol. I know these are a bit complex, but we'll, we'll handle each one uh, on a separate occasion, uh, actually later. So the first two, okay, HTTP and FTP, um, can be spoken by your browser. Okay, your browser already knows a couple of languages or protocols that it can speak. So most of them uh, support FTP. But the very basic thing that a browser should support is HTTP, which is used to, you know, basically present a website. Okay, that's the very the most basic functionality that a browser should have is HTTP and how it how to understand and how to basically establish a connection using HTTP. Some browsers also support the file transfer protocol and we'll we'll see what this is later. Now POP3 and SMTP are protocols uh, used by mail clients uh, like uh, Outlook, you know, Outlook or Outlook Express or Thunderbird or iMail, you know, mail clients or perhaps Gmail and, and all the other uh, web mail sites. So the first two can be spoken by browsers, the last Two can be spoken by mail clients and obviously uh, they are made for different things so browsers can't understand POP3 and SMTP and mail clients usually doesn't understand neither HTTP nor FTP so let's see what HTTP is HTTP stands for hypertext transfer protocol and you may wonder hyper what and a, a hypertext uh, for the common folk is just a link okay so you have this uh, 
this document that in some part of it specifies that a section of that uh, of the text should point to another document that could be either in the same place or somewhere else um, and that link is what it's called basically a, a hypertext okay it is a, an extended text and uh, usually uh, documents that have hypertexts are uh, th that concept is called that it has a metadata right we'll see that much later but I just want you to to know this so that's the hypertext transfer protocol that browsers speak so all pages have um, obviously text and links and a browser the most basic functionality that a browser should have is the ability to uh, process that document and interpret those links now FTP is a file transfer protocol it's a little bit more uh, complex than this but you can imagine this as a folder in a remote computer that's what it is okay <clears throat> it is a folder that you can um, basically use to upload stuff from your machine or to download stuff from that remote folder into your machine it's a file transfer it explains for itself now SMTP and POP3 are mail protocols okay they are usually uh, used to handle emails okay and these protocols uh, each of them have a uh, has a, a particular use SMTP which is the simple mail transfer protocol um, is used for outgoing connections okay for sending emails while POP3 it's usually used to receive emails okay for incoming uh, emails you may also hear <coughs> of this thing called IMAP okay an IMAP is an internet message access protocol and what is it for and uh, well IMAP basically replaces the functionality of POP3 um, POP3 works just like um, FTP okay instead of transferring files what you do is to transfer emails so when the server gets an email uh, that that message is stored on a, sp on a specific folder belonging to you and to no one else okay and uh, when you <coughs> click on download messages if the server uh, is uh, configured to use this uh, protocol pop3 the message gets downloaded from that remote folder into your email client and is deleted in the original location you may also have an option to you know store a copy of that message on the remote folder but that's what it does okay it transfer it copies that message back to your computer now IMAP works a little bit differently and it works a little more like the hypertext you know uh, transfer protocol which is HTTP uh, and basically what it downloads is a list of all your messages from the server okay but your messages are never in your computer they are actually in, in the remote server okay so what you actually do when you click on an email and you want to read that email your mail client makes a request to the server and it works just like link okay it basically downloads allows you to visualize that message remotely without ever downloading the message to your computer obviously some mail clients um, supports uh, storing those uh, email messages locally but that's how it works 
So that's SMTP and POP3. Another thing that you'll always hear me uh, talking about is a server client architecture. Okay, I know these are all big words, but it's pretty simple. A server or host is the machine that you're connecting to. Okay, it, they usually receive connections from multiple machines. And these multiple machines, each one of them, uh, are usually called a client. Okay, so the server is like the store owner and the clients are, you know, going to the store to buy stuff. So it's a server client architecture. That's how it's called. So this is the end of the second lesson. I hope you, you enjoyed it. Um, and if you if you liked it and you learned something new, I suggest you to subscribe. And uh, thank you very, very much for watching and see you on the next class. Goodbye.